you've probably heard the warning, rice contains arsenic, fermented rice water must be dangerous, and pouring it into your soil sounds like a mistake waiting to happen, but here's the truth most gardeners never hear. When used correctly, fermented rice water is not a threat to your garden. It's one of the simplest, safest, and most powerful microbial boosters you can make at home. And today on Soil Sage Chronicles, we're cutting through the fear and getting straight to what actually works. This isn't hype, this is soil science made practical, let's get into it. Where the arsenic fear really comes from, arsenic exists naturally in soils and water all over the world. Rice plants are efficient at absorbing it, which is why uncooked rice grains can contain trace amounts. That fact alone has caused fermented rice water to be unfairly labeled as dangerous for gardens. Here's what gets missed. Arsenic binds tightly to soil particles. It does not move freely in healthy soil. And more importantly, the fermentation process does not concentrate arsenic. It does the opposite. It shifts the biology of the liquid, not the mineral content. When you dilute fermented rice water properly and apply it to living soil, the amount of arsenic introduced is so small it becomes irrelevant compared to what already exists naturally in the ground. Meanwhile, the biological benefits are immediate and measurable. The danger is not fermented rice water, the danger is misunderstanding it. Why fermented rice water works so well in soil is actually pretty interesting. Fermented rice water is not fertilizer in the traditional sense, it does not feed plants directly, it feeds soil life, that distinction really matters. During fermentation, naturally occurring microbes multiply rapidly, lactic acid bacteria, yeasts, and beneficial fungi dominate the liquid. These organisms play a critical role in nutrient cycling, organic matter breakdown, and root zone protection. When introduced to soil, these microbes help unlock phosphorus, mobilize micronutrients, and improve soil structure, roots grow deeper, plants become more resilient, soil becomes alive again. This is why gardeners see stronger growth even though rice water contains very little nitrogen, phosphorus or potassium. The power is biological, not chemical. So, let's talk about how fermentation neutralizes risk and, you know, actually boosts the benefits. Fresh rice water is mostly just starch suspended in water. If you leave it alone, it spoils pretty unpredictably. But, fermentation changes that completely. As beneficial microbes consume the starches, they create these organic acids that, uh, stabilize the solution. This process lowers the pH just a bit, which suppresses harmful pathogens while actually favoring microbes that work in harmony with plant roots. This microbial dominance is really the safety mechanism here. It prevents rot, it prevents anaerobic toxicity, and most importantly, it ensures that when you apply the solution to soil, it integrates smoothly into the existing soil food web. Fermentation doesn't make rice water risky, actually, it makes it controlled. The exact fermented rice water formula that works, precision really matters here, and honestly, this is where most people go wrong. Start with one cup of uncooked white rice, rinse it gently in one liter of clean chlorine-free water, stir for about 30 seconds, then strain out the rice, be sure to keep the cloudy water. Place the liquid in a loosely covered container at room temperature for 24 hours, you'll notice a mild sour smell, that's exactly what you want, do not let it rot, if it smells putrid, discard it. After fermentation, dilute the solution before use. Mix one part fermented rice water with 10 parts clean water, that means one cup of fermented liquid added to 10 cups of water, this dilution is critical for safety and effectiveness. Never apply it undiluted. Never store it sealed. Use it within 48 hours. Apply diluted fermented rice water directly to the soil, not the leaves. This is a soil treatment, not a foliar spray. First, water the soil lightly beforehand so microbes can move easily. Then drench the root zone gently. Early morning or late afternoon is best. 
Use it once every two to three weeks. More is not better. Soil biology thrives on balance, not overload. This method ensures microbes colonize the rhizosphere where they belong, without stressing plants or disrupting existing microbial communities, and that's why this does not contaminate your soil. Let's address the fear head-on. The arsenic content in diluted fermented rice water is, honestly, minuscule. It is actually lower than what many gardens receive through irrigation water alone. Healthy soils already contain arsenic bound to iron and clay particles. Adding trace amounts does not increase plant uptake. In fact, active microbial communities reduce arsenic availability by stabilizing soil chemistry. Beneficial microbes, you know, immobilize heavy metals, making them less accessible to plant roots. So the irony is this. Properly used fermented rice water actually reduces risk rather than increasing it. So, what plants benefit the most? Well, vegetables, fruit trees, herbs and ornamentals all respond really well. Root crops in particular, benefit from improved soil structure. Leafy greens tend to show stronger color and vigor. And flowering plants? They produce more consistent blooms. Which is pretty great. This is especially effective in tired soils, compacted beds and containers where, you know, microbial diversity is limited. If your soil feels dead, this brings it back. So, common mistakes can really cause problems, you know. Issues often come up when people skip the fermentation step, forget to dilute the rice water, or maybe just apply it way too often. Fresh rice water, if not handled right, can actually ferment anaerobically in the soil, and that leads to odor issues which nobody wants. Applying undiluted fermented rice water can also stress your plant roots, and, uh, overdoing it can throw your soil biology out of balance. Fermented rice water is, honestly, super affordable. It's accessible to just about anyone, and hey, it doesn't require any special equipment. Used correctly, it can deliver results that, well, bottled products often struggle to match. So, this isn't a trend. It's actually a return to biological gardening, grounded in observation and science. At Soil Sage Chronicles, we focus on methods that strengthen soil for the long term. This is one of them. Final thoughts for fellow gardeners. Fear thrives where understanding is missing. Fermented rice water has been misunderstood for far too long. When prepared properly, diluted correctly, and applied thoughtfully, it is safe effective and transformative for soil health trust biology respect balance and let your soil work with you not against you if this guide helped you rethink what's possible in your garden make sure you subscribe to soil sage chronicles for more deep practical soil wisdom share this with a fellow gardener who's still on the fence and keep growing smarter season after season